Tonight my topic is the Great Abortion Cover-Up. Is this a clickbait title? Not if you have the facts to back it up. My uh, talk tonight is mostly, I guess, of interest to Christians. Uh, we'll focus on the Catholic Church, but a lot of Protestant groups have the same opinions of abortion that the Catholic Church has. I live in the United States. A lot of Protestants and Catholics here, and this will be of interest to them, I suppose. Okay, I'll be focusing on two documents. This one, and this one mentions this one. These are both official Catholic Church documents. Okay, now we're going to see abortion called a moral evil, gravely contrary to moral law. And we're going to see the church claim that its teaching hasn't changed. And, for instance, that first document, since the first century, the church has affirmed the moral evil of every procured abortion has not changed and remains unchangeable, gravely contrary to moral law. Okay, what that means is that the church has said always that abortion is a mortal sin. Most people don't care what the church says is a mortal sin. Protestants certainly don't care. A lot of Catholics don't either. I mean, missing mass on Sunday, premarital sex, contraception, are all, as far as I know, still mortal sins. Even a lot of Catholics don't really care. The big question for most people is, is abortion the killing of a genuine human being? And the church has not always taught that it was, as we will see. Okay, the church, the, the, this document then goes on to cite two early Christian writings. Now, right there, you might kind of get skeptical. Why not the Bible? These two writings, I've never even heard of these before uh, I read something about abortion. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Now, they come from the 1st and 2nd century, okay, that agrees with this, but the Bible was compiled. Councils, church councils decided what books would be in the Bible and what books would not be in the Bible around the 4th century. So these documents were known for centuries to Christians that they, that they were judged not to have sufficient inspiration to make it into the Bible. Okay, what does the Bible say? Oh, by the way, yeah. this, by the way, doesn't even specifically condemn abortion at any stage. Fruit of the womb sounds like after birth, but it certainly doesn't say any time after conception. Well, what does the Bible say? Well, we don't have to wait long to find out. This encyclical letter that I mentioned earlier by Pope Paul II has this. Now, that might surprise people, but there it is. Look it up. Uh, now, this is a strange situation. The Bible condemns eating pork, eating cheeseburgers, uh, all these things over here. It doesn't specifically condemn abortion. It's rather odd. Okay, so we've learned two things so far. Uh, moral evil and such phrases does not mean killing a genuine human being. It means mortal sin. And the Bible does not mention or condemn abortion. Now, by the way, I've seen this quote on billboards as I've driven. And this is alleged to be God's condemnation of abortion in the Bible. First of all, if that's the best they can do, it's pretty weak. Secondly, they don't even use the whole quote. If you read it, it's... And this, even without this, that to me is God's foreknowledge. It has nothing to do with abortion. Now, by the way, there is something in the Bible that does seem to say the taking of the life of a fetus is not equivalent to taking the life of a genuine human being. It's in Exodus 21. If a pregnant woman is struck and suffers a miscarriage, the offender is fined. But if the woman herself is killed, then the offender must die. That seems to make a distinction between the life of the woman and the life of the fetus. As a matter of fact, St. Augustine cited that. And... Now, he's using something here we'll see a lot more of. Unformed child. He's talking about whether the fetus has a human soul or not. 
and did not want the unborn childbirth to belong to homicide. Okay, so you can read this at your leisure. We'll see this again in a little bit. So we've learned that uh, not only the Bible does not mention or condemn abortion, that Exodus asks only for a fine for causing a miscarriage, which doesn't make the life of the fetus equivalent to the life of the woman. Okay, next, insolment. Uh, as we mentioned, that's when the fetus gets a human soul. Doctors of the church. The idea here of doctors of the church is that the Roman Catholic Church has thousands of saints, but only a few men and women, 33, are declared doctors of the church, and their writings are taken as some more, somewhat more authoritative than all the other saints. To use a, a secular analogy, if Bill Gates says something about Microsoft, that counts a lot more than if some programmer who's worked for Microsoft for three years says something. Okay, St. Augustine said, pertains to homicide. References Exodus, it concluded the child did not have a human soul. And he thought that the insolment, the uh, giving of a human soul to the fetus, happened at the earliest, almost six weeks after conception. Here's more about St. Augustine. Uh, this says that in the Irish canons, we'll talk about canon law in a bit, illicit intercourse was considered a greater sin than abortion. And uh, the church canon law, as we'll see, was only homicide when the fetus was formed, when it had a human soul. Aquinas said that the fetus first gets a vegetative soul, then an animal soul, and finally uh, a rational soul, which he, by which he meant a human soul. Uh, here we go, St. Jerome, another doctor of the church. The seed gradually takes shape, and it does not count as killing until the individual elements have acquired. Okay, so you can read all this at your leisure. Uh, so we've learned that doctors of the church declared specifically that early abortion was not murder because the fetus did not possess a human soul. Okay? Now, let's continue. Some of the greatest teachers of the church believed in the homicide and insolment. Now we're going to see of what a few popes said. This uh, Pope Gregory decided 166 days, almost 24 weeks, was when the fetus got a human soul. That's what he taught. Uh, Pope Gregory XIV, uh, only the homicide of an animated fetus was uh, punishable by excommunication. So he made the distinction between the fetus with the human soul and the fetus without a human soul. So now we've learned that various popes taught the difference between taking the life of a fetus with the human soul and without a human soul. Now, it shouldn't be surprising that if uh, popes taught it and um, doctors of the church taught it, that it entered church canon law. Now, canon law, the, Greek, the, the word canon comes from some Greek word. It's not like the weapon. Canon law is the law of the church. So the idea is a priest in France has to follow French civil law and Spain has to follow French civil law. But what happens if a priest violates the privacy of the confession? Well, that, then canon law, church law applies. So that's what canon law is, internal ecclesiastical law. And this was a compilation of a canon law done in the 12th century. It was used as the basic text for canon law up until the 1900s. It's quite a long time. And it maintained the distinction between fetus animus, animated fetus, a fetus that has a human soul, and fetus inanimus. That was in church canon law from the 12th century to 1869. The church for many centuries taught that early abortion was not murder, not taking the life of a human being. Uh, now, here is that first document we mentioned. They kind of allude to what we just learned. From the 13th and 19th centuries, some theologians speculated. No, doctors of the church taught and popes taught. Uh, might be morally justified. Okay, the theories were always rejected. Yes, that they were morally justified. It was always considered a moral sin. Evil act can never... They're saying here that it's a mortal sin and it wasn't justified. They're not talking about whether it was considered taking the life of a genuine human being. Here again, 
some canonical penalties were more severe after the human soul was thought to be present. However, it was always a grave, it was always a mortal sin. Okay, we've seen that and we'll keep seeing it. Okay, and the here's um, an article from the Irish Times. The church's current position on abortion was only established in 1869, and that's when the Pope outlawed abortion from the moment of conception. But did he declare it homicide? Well, let's see. Uh, here we go, from 1969. Now, this is the church's own document. The obsolete distinction between unsold and unsold uninsold fetus was removed from canon law. And they're saying that it has something to do with science, but the church is supposed to be teaching God's eternal word, not teaching us what science says. Okay, anyway, uh, it was in canon law for about 500 years more, and then it was removed. Okay, so we've learned this. For centuries, the church's own law said there was a difference between the unsold fetus and the fetus that lacks a human soul. Now let's move on to equivocation. Equivocation is ambiguous language to conceal the truth. And for instance, priests told me I should have faith. I have faith my son will do well in school. Therefore, the priest should be happy with me because I have faith. Well, here faith, there's equivocation. Faith is used in two different meanings. And here's some rather funny one. Noisy children are a real headache. Two aspirins will make a headache go away. Therefore, two aspirins will make noisy children go away. And I'll leave you to read the one about beer. Anyway, that's equivocation. Now here's another equivocation, human life. Does human life, does the phrase human life mean a personal human life, like the life of Abraham Lincoln or whoever? Now that requires a human soul. But when human life means the thing that's possessed by each cell of a human, living human being, that's cellular human life. That does not require a human soul. Um, my blood is alive. I'm a human being, it has human life. But my, my blood cells do not have a, each have a soul. Okay, that's equivocation. Now, here's that document we mentioned again. And some people try to justify abortion by claiming, at least up to a certain age, cannot be considered a personal human life. Yes, there's some people are doctors of the church and popes. But in fact, by the time the ovum is fertilized, a cellular human life has begun. Okay, at least that's my interpretation of what's being written here. You might have your own interpretation. He goes on to say, it would never be made human if it were not already human. Yeah, it would never receive, eventually, a human soul if it was not a human body. God doesn't give a human soul to a frog or a horse. Okay, that's, that's fine. And even if the presence of the spiritual human soul, of the spiritual soul, cannot be ascertained the results of scientific re oh so the pope is relying on scientific research the bible doesn't say abortion is wrong the church's own canon law for over 500 years said taking the life of an embryo without a human soul was not murder scientific re research tells us the facts but leave the judgments up to us and why doesn't the pope just say it is now the teaching of the catholic church that human soul is infused at conception well, why doesn't he say that? Anyway, we've seen that personal human life and cellular human life are not the same thing. Now, is it now the teaching of the Catholic Church that the human soul is infused at conception? Well, you see, the, human, the, the, the church isn't like science. Science can say, hey, Newton was wrong and Einstein is right, and they can do that without having any problem. But the church presents itself as teachings God's eternal word. And if a council, 1312, affirmed the view of Aquinas as Catholic dogma, it's going to be very hard to repudiate. This says it has never been repudiated. What does that mean? The Catholic Church has never officially changed the dogma that the fetus does not have a human soul at the moment of conception, but acquires one over time. That might be hard to believe. With all the thing about human life begins at conception, yes, so your human life. Or the blueprint for a personal human life begins at conception. But the difference between a blueprint and a building is, is quite um, dramatic. Okay. 
This stuff might be hard to believe. Do your own research. Don't depend on what I say. Here is the Irish Times. It has never been officially repudiated. Which we just saw. And then it goes on to say, indeed, in 1974, the Vatican Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith acknowledged that the issue of insolment is still an open issue. Now, I haven't pulled that document, document and presented you to the actual statement of this, but you can do that yourself. It's still an open question. The Catholic Church does not hold that the fetus has a human soul from the moment of conception and therefore does, cannot teach that taking the life of a fetus which lacks a human soul is murder. Because it's very basic that what makes a human being is a human body and a human soul. A human body without a human soul is not, it, it, taking the life of that is not murder. Very briefly, um, does this constitute a cover-up? Oh, I think so. And suppose a woman had an abortion, let's say in the 1970s, when she was young, 15, and she's felt guilty all these decades. Would she would like to notice? Would this be good news for her? Yes, I think so. But suppose a man in the 1990s bombed an abortion clinic and killed doctors and nurses and staff. How would he feel when he learned that those lives that he was saving that he thought were human lives. Um, at any rate, I think I've proven, or at least given a sufficient justification to justify the title. Uh, this is a serious philosophical channel, and I don't do clickbait. Thank you.